This video is brought to you by the Raven Space Patreon page. Without your help, we cannot do any of the cool things we do. So Patreon allows you to support us and support independent media. And when you support us, we support you by giving you early access to videos, special giveaways, and even Ravens tickets. So check out the Raven Space Patreon and support today. Welcome to the Raven Space on YouTube. My name is Jason and this is Raven Space Daily, where we talk about Baltimore Ravens news every single weekday. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the last show of the day. Please stay till the end to find out who the giveaway winner is. Now we're going to have three great news stories for you guys. But first, subscribe to the Raven Space on YouTube if you're not yet subscribed. Also, a special shout out to our Patreon subscribers because I you guys, now this is possible. You guys are the MVPs of the Raven Space. Thank you guys so much. Now we're going to go to our first topic, which is a sad topic. It's the cuts. As you guys know, the Ravens must get down to a 43-man roster. Um, it's going to be hard. They already cut 18 players, and I'm going to let you guys know who the cuts are. So I'm going to tell you guys the 18 cuts. First, Jeremy Zuta. Then you got Larry Donnell. You got Thad Lewis, Bobby Rainey, Trevor Wade, Griff Whalen, uh, Kenny Allen, Randy Allen, CJ Board, Gerald Barkston, Otha Foster, wow, Rubens Joseph, Derek Nelson, Tabor Pepper, Jared Pugsley, Keenan Reynolds, and Lorenzo Talaferro, and DeAndre Wesley. So, of course, a lot of names pop up and pop out, and we're going to talk about those names before we get into the review of our next of our game against the Saints. And so, <clears throat> the first is Jeremy Zuta. It, he must have regressed uh, mightily because for him to go from a starter for the Baltimore Ravens to leave and then come back and then get cut is insane. Um, I don't know what he did or what he did not do, but for them to say that you can't even be a backup for us, because um, they weren't paying him a lot. They were not paying him starter money. So for them to say you can't even be a backup for us, that means something. There has to be something there. And it's probably the same reason that the San Francisco 49ers cut him. So that was a big surprise. Um, Larry Dinell was a surprise, too. The Ravens did have a lot of tight ends, but I thought that he could make it. Um, Otha Foster played lights out in about three of the for preseason games. He was one of the best players out there. And for him to get cut, I was surprised about about that. I thought that he could play on special teams. Maybe they cut him um, and then they think he, they can bring him back. That may be an option. But I think that I was surprised by that one as well. But maybe the most surprising one on here is Keenan Reynolds. And Keenan Reynolds is surprising because I thought this was his year. And it was surprising until he dropped that punt. When he dropped that punt, and I said it, if you guys follow on Twitter, now that we can, only, can no longer do the live streams uh, because it's been restricted by the NFL, I'm on Twitter. I, I now stream, I tweet, you know, with the game. And they, and when I saw Keenan Reynolds drop that ball, you can go see my tweet that says, Keenan Reynolds just committed the death blow. He won't be on the team. And that's what happened, right? So they may bring him back to the practice squad. I believe he's still young enough. But I thought this was his year. Uh, it's very light at wide receiver um, after the first three players. Um, and so I was surprised to see him get cut. I really thought that he had a chance. And then Lorenzo Taliaferro, it's been a while for him. To see him get cut, it, it happens. Um, so it's it's one thing that, it's, it's one thing for a running back that was playing. He wasn't even playing running back position. He had to switch to fullback. So I'm not surprised to see him cut. Um, so those are the cuts you guys let me know in the comments below who you think was the most surprising cut I want to know how you guys feel, you know, let me know and now we're gonna move on to the winners and losers From the fourth preseason game the Ravens versus the Saints uh, It was a okay preseason game again preseason game four. You can't really expect that much But I'll give you guys some of my winners and some of my losers. So I have two big winners um, from last night, and I'll even throw a third one in there. So first, Carl Davis. Carl Davis had a big night. Constant pressure. Um, he played the full game, I believe. Constant pressure. He had a big interception, and <clears throat> that's what you want from your tackles. Um, again, he's not the best. He's not even the best tackle on the roster. He's an NFL player, and if he was on the bubble, he's no longer. He was no longer on the bubble. He's going to make the team just because of that performance uh, last night. So he's, again, a great player, 
um, made some big, big plays, and I'm happy to see um, that the Ravens like him and are going to keep him. The second winner is Michael Campanero. And again, he's just a winner because everyone else lost, right? Keenan Reynolds committed suicide by trying to uh, catch that punt when he should have fair caught it. Committed suicide. Um, so that was one thing. And then you had Griff Whalen, who did not look good. Um, Taquan Mazzell, you know, did kick off returns. Um, but nothing special happened. I thought he was about to break one, but he didn't. So again, Michael Campanero won because no one else won. Um, and again, similar with, with Ryan Mallett, if everyone else you're going against is doing bad, then you don't you only have to be okay in order to make the team. And that's what happened for Michael Campanero. And so we'll we'll see what happens in the regular season. But for right now, in my head, he is the starter at return um, for the Baltimore Ravens. And then the third one I'm gonna throw in is Bam Bradley. Bam played a very good game. Um, that coupled with the injury to Albert McClellan, it's going to make sure Bam is on this team um, this year. So congratulations to Bam for making the team. Um, but he was a winner. He played lights out last night. And he was in every single play, every single time. So, And some losers from last night we're going to talk about as well. All the quarterbacks other than Ryan Mallett, especially Thad Lewis. Um, that game last night may have hurt Thad's career because he looked horrible. I was not sure a quarterback could be worse than Ryan Mallett. Um, Thad Lewis is a quarterback that is worse than Ryan Mallett. Um, and it's, it's, he just did not look good. He fumbled the ball, um, again, through terrible passes. And Ryan Mallett threw bad passes too. Uh, but the passes that Thad was throwing weren't good. He had one good drive at the end that was mostly based on his feet. Uh, but I was super, super, super disappointed to see him play well, he's going to get the most playing time he's had all preseason he put up a stinker and so i think that makes him a loser um and then another loser was the the, the deep the back half of the defense um when you don't have a lot of starters in um you see that and a player like marlon humphrey who you know was supposed to be you know ready he didn't look ready um and i think he has to be considered a loser because in his first his first game it wasn't great and i don't know if it was terrible but it sure wasn't good um again he he lit up some catches on him and i thought he would have lit up a lot more there was a couple of plays where the receiver dropped the ball um there you know a couple of plays where he's running on the sideline and he just happens to be there when the ball hits so the ball hits him on the shoulder right you know not no skill plays really um and you know now he did make some couple of good plays but i thought that for him to be outplayed by an undrafted rookie like Jalen Hill is very concerning. Because Jalen Hill was playing the same position he was last night um, for most of the preseason. So that was those were a couple losers in my book. I want to say uh, Mizell was a loser because he got outplayed last night by Bobby Rainey. But Mizell's going to make this team and Bobby Rainey is not. So how can Mizell be a loser, right? So, But those are my winners and losers. You guys let me know in the comments below. If you watch the game... Uh, who are your winners and losers and a special shout out if you watched the entire game like we did here at the raven space so we're going to move on to the takeaways from this game <clears throat> and again two main takeaways i'm going to talk about the first one humphrey is not ready to start in the nfl um we saw last night i thought he had a okay game against the third stringers of a of a team uh like the saints and you know, the Saints aren't supremely talented at wide receiver past Michael Thomas. So I really thought that he struggled. I mean, I thought that if he was against NFL players uh, who are first stringers, like you know, Antonio Brown, he wouldn't stand a chance. Of course, Antonio Brown's one of the best. But even, you know, players like uh, John Ross, I think might eat him up in the NFL uh, based on the way the NFL game is played. So I was not very impressed by him. And that's one of my first takeaways. A second takeaway I have is that the Ravens have too much depth. And it's a great thing. The way that Ozzie Newsome, Dean Pease a little bit, and John Harbaugh created this defense. It went from an old defense instantly, boom, to a young defense. And it's crazy. We're young and we're fast. Um, and you see players like Bam Bradley, who, again, 
fast middle linebacker, more of a zone type linebacker, but comes up and makes plays at the line of scrimmage. But even him, he's going to be a third string linebacker, and he's still very good, I thought. So, again, those are my takeaways that the defense is super, super deep. Um, and it's crazy how quick you can go from an old defense to a new defense if you have a good general manager like Ozzie Newsome. So, again, in Ozzie, we trust. And then, like I said, my first takeaway, Humphrey's not ready for the NFL yet. Um, it's a good thing that the Ravens got Brandon Carr, um, and they're going to let Humphrey work into it. So I thought that was good. And so we're going to move on, guys, to the giveaway. And the giveaway winner this week is Merkaba. So shout out to Merkaba. Please uh, message, us on, message, us, message us on YouTube. Sorry, guys. Message us on YouTube. There we go. And or email us. Um, again, the YouTube message would be better so we can verify she was a shorter process and different things like that. So, again, you are the winner of the giveaway. Thank you so much. And if you want to win next week's giveaway, make sure you're active in the comments. And you have to be a YouTube subscriber. So be active in the comments. Be a subscriber. And you have a chance to win. So that is the show for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the Raven Space on YouTube for the best Baltimore Ravens content on the internet. Also, if you want to support us and help support independent media, check out the Raven Space Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Every single dollar counts. So thank you guys so much. I'm excited uh, about the NFL starting. Next Sunday, you will be ready. Um, again, we have videos coming out every single day, so please check that out. We have new videos coming too, so again, be ready for that as well. So thank you guys so much, and go Ravens.